Hello everyone, we're going to talk about long length video generation. Yes, again, long length video looks like a trend reflecting to AI training team too. Previously, I've talked about this a lot using the WAN 2.1 vase. You can use it for multiple tasks, in video content editing, as well as extending videos using the first and last frame. And today, we're going to check out another framework called Stable Video Infinity. Now, this framework is based on WAN 2.1. Within this framework, you can do a lot of stuff, lots of video creation with high temporal consistency and video generation for your content. As you can see right down here, it's supported in ComfyUI as a LoRa model. These LoRa models start with the name SVI. There are a few different model types for this framework. You can see right in the chart here. There's a list of models based on the SVI, created for SVI short, SVI film, and also a few types of theming for these models to create multiple scene generations. Another one is called Tom and Jerry, which is focused on cartoon animations. With this one, you use a single image as the start frame, and it continues generating very long cartoon-style videos. And the last two in this model family are called SVI Talk, for talking avatars, and SVI Dance, for dance animations. Now here you see all the inputs already mentioned what you need to do, and what you need to input as data to generate long-length videos. The SVI short uses image and text prompts. Obviously, this is using WAN 2.1 image to video as a base model, and on top of that, it embeds this SVI LoRa to make it happen, as well as SVI film ops. Also, there are two different frame types in this model that generate multiple scenes using image to video. Some of those, especially the SVI films, are what we'll focus on today. I'm going to test this out because it's quite interesting. You can use an image and multiple text prompts as a text prompt stream, which is basically what they call the travel prompts we talked about in a previous video on long length video generation. And there's a lot more we could talk about, but for now, since we cannot talk about everything in one YouTube video, I'm only going to test the SVI films and because it's quite interesting. I've tested a few of the SVI models already. The SVI short looks okay, but not like what I saw in the demo on their official page. It looks okay in my tests, but not really usable. And saw this short generate videos online, none of it feel impressive. Maybe we have better AI model now, and out demand set higher eventually. So by checking out the Hugging Face repo for this AI framework, you can see what the differences are, and why it's supposed to be applied for long length videos to fix some of the existing issues. The infinity length of this model fixes some common problems with AI models, color shifts and motion degradation when generating over long periods. The SVI model addresses this by supporting motion continuity from the last frames and continuing to generate further durations for your video content. This improves on what we experienced before with WAN 2.1, where color and motion quality would degrade. When we generate videos longer than 20 or 30 seconds, or even more, the AI output tends to degrade a lot. The longer the timing, the worse it gets. As I mentioned, I'm going to test out the SVI film. This multiple scene duration is very interesting because it supports a text prompt stream. You can input multiple text prompts throughout every 5 seconds of video. Each 5 second segment handles its own text prompt and together they generate a long length video animation. The difference between SVI film and SVI film transition is that the transition model gives you more scene transition effects and you'll get different scenes every five seconds within that environment. Think of it like what we previously saw with hollow scene. That's a similar concept. One image as the start frame and it generates different camera angles, transitions or actions over time with the same character in the video. For SVI film, Without transition, there are fewer scene transitions, so it's kind of the opposite. When you check the file versions, yes, that's version 1.0, but we're not using the version 1.0 files from the official Hugging Face repo because they're not compatible with the comfy UI repackaged models for WAN 2.1 in some ways. The better approach is to use the repackaged LoRa models released by WAN Videos Comfy by KJ. The LoRa folder for Stable Video Infinity includes all the different model types across the SVI model family. Now the SVI film that I mentioned I'd test, there's another option called the Opt version. These optimized versions fine-tune the video effects a bit more. 
And one interesting thing I'm also going to test is SVI Dance, because you can plug it directly into the WAN 2.1 VASE workflow I used previously. Just swap in the LoRa model without any major modifications. Well, there are minor modifications. You don't need the color match for last frames because this model is already designed to fix coloration and motion degradation issues. So as you can see from all these examples, showing different demos for each SVI model type, you can get a sense of what it's capable of. And we're going to check that out in Comfy UI. Okay, so now let's open Comfy UI. The first workflow I'm going to talk about is WAN 2.1 image to video using native nodes to connect SVI film for long video generation. Here, I've set up an all-in-one for loop structure. Back when I first started playing around with looping for multiple samplers in May, we had something like this. One of the examples from previous long video length workflow. We generate the first part of the video, like five or three seconds, then use the video frames and pass them into loop extensions to continue with the last frames and carry over some overlapping frames to maintain motion continuity, and it was kind of bulky. I personally didn't like having multiple sampler sections, so I stopped using that setup. Instead, I kept updating the WAN 2.2 image to video long length generation workflow and trimmed it down to a single sampler group like this. That way, you can start with the first five seconds of video and continue the rest of the duration within the loop. So now, one loop can handle the entire video generation for image to video. And again, this is for WAN 2.2. You'd have multiple model data samplings for high and low noise. But after I saw the SVI release for Comfy UI, I modified that workflow to go back to WAN 2.1 from WAN 2.2 image to video using native nodes and I tested it with SVI Film for long-length video generation. The SVI models I'm using are right here. You'll want to download them from the WAN Videos wrapper. All the LoRa models are included there. Of course, you'll store them in your comfy UI slash models slash LoRa folder. Once they're in that folder, you can use the Load LoRa node to select whichever LoRa you want. That's how you load the SVI LoRa into your comfy workflow. I'm also using the Light X2 V image to video distillation model here, along with the LoRa. We can use load sampling steps to test this video creation, as well as the good old movie gen. I just want to try this out too, because back when WAN 2.1 first came out a few months ago, we used it with a really great merged model called Fusion X. Inside Fusion X, Movie Gen was included, and that helped improve videos with more cinematic styles and camera motion during video creation. Now, the color reference node here, I just haven't deleted it yet. It's left over from my WAN 2.2 long length video workflow. I kept it in the graph just in case, but you don't really need to use it. If your video generations have stable color and contrast and everything looks good, then you don't need to turn this on or connect it to your workflow. In the previous method, we used image color matching to try to fix long video degradation issues. That was a simple way to address color problems. But with SVI, I bypassed that node on purpose to show that, even without it, the SVI model does a decent job maintaining consistent coloration. I can't say it's a 100% fix. Some of my test output still had slight color or contrast shifts, but overall, it's much better. As you can see in one of the demos I tested just before recording this video, it came from all these text prompts I input here. Each prompt is separated by a new line. I've talked about these prompt groups before in other long-length video generation tutorials, using what I call the travel prompt method to generate different actions every five seconds. That's exactly what Stable Video Infinity is designed for. It needs a text prompt stream for this type of AI model. So, for example, the first line of text prompt will be used for the first 5 seconds. After that finishes, it'll use the next line for seconds, 5 to 10, and so on. Each segment gets its own action, and it continues for the full video duration. Now I've updated the frame and FPS settings. Before, you had to input everything manually, but now there's automatic calculation for total frame count based on the number of seconds and your chosen FPS. By default, WAN 2.1 uses 16 frames per second so you rarely need to change that. The main number you'll adjust for long videos is the total seconds. Let's say I set it to 60 seconds, that's one minute. And if each segment is five seconds, you'll need 12 text prompts total. 
Creating the travel prompt is easy. Just finish one line, press enter, and start the next prompt on a new line. You don't need extra spaces or formatting. Just separate each prompt with a line break. I've added a note in the node to remind you of this format. Now, back to the model loader. As you can see, we're using the WAN 2.1 image to video model. If you're running on a low VRAM machine, go for the GGUF quantized model. Otherwise, use the WAN 2.1 image to video safe tensor files, whichever works best for you. Just make sure you pick the right model type. For the LoRa models, I'm currently testing with MovieGen inserted into one of the LoRa stack slots, but that's optional. You can bypass it or use your own LoRa instead. But the essential part, the whole point of this SVI long length video setup is that you must use an SVI LoRa model along with the Light x 2 v model to speed up generation with low sampling steps. Everything else here is the same as a standard WAN 2.1 image to video workflow, clip loader, VAE, and clip vision. We need clip vision because this is image to video generation. Now for the sampler, I've tried different options like Euler and UniPC. The more traditional and safer method for WAN 2.1 is UniPC. You really can't go wrong with it. After the loop runs through all the text prompts, the clips are stitched together and you get your final video output here. This workflow looks much cleaner now. Fewer sampler groups, less clutter, compared to my earlier looping videos, which had the first video segment generated separately. Keep in mind, this setup only works for image to video workflows. For control net video to video, you'll need a different mechanism. Let's try this with another image and generate another long video to see how it turns out. I'm going to use an image I generated in Quen. It's a model at a racing motorsport show. I asked Quen to describe what the character would do over 30 seconds of movement. Well, both SVI Film and SVI Short can handle this kind of thing using the SVI LoRa. Speaking of SVI, there's a specific LoRa called SVI Short for steady single shot videos. That means the camera stays pretty stable or tracks the subject consistently throughout the whole video. But when I tested it, the results felt a bit underwhelming, not very dynamic. I prefer more exciting camera movement or character motion, so I like using the SVI Film Opt model instead. Here are the text prompts Quen generated using its vision language model. I gave it instructions for a 30-second video with 5-second segments, and it produced this content. I can use this directly as my travel prompts. For the demo, I'll delete the section labels just to keep it clean, but all you need to do is press enter to start a new prompt on the next line. For this test, I'm going to change the duration to 15 seconds. You can adjust width and height based on your needs. Now, back to the official Hugging Face page. Something important to note. SVI Film uses five motion frames from the end to carry over into the next extension, but in Comfy UI, I haven't been able to get that working with five frames yet. The WAN 2.1 image to video node only accepts a single image as input, not multiple frames. So for now, using five frames isn't practical unless you add a custom node. Let's run it and see what happens. So after generating the video, you'll notice I accidentally used a different image from the same Quen batch, but it's from the same scene. The character is still on the motorbike in the same environment, so the actions should work fine. Over these 15 seconds, you can see the generations here. I also ran frame interpolation, boosting from 16 frames per second to 32 frames per second, so the motion looks smoother, and the final result looks like this. Compared to SVI Short, this feels more dynamic. I saw a demo on YouTube from a brilliant AI researcher showing SVI short in action, and while it looked okay in a continuous sequence, my own tests felt unnatural. The character moved, but the environment didn't feel alive. So, I'm not using SVI short in this tutorial. I prefer SVI film, and specifically, the frame transition version. Now, the transition model creates something a bit different. Even with the same prompts, you'll get more varied camera angles and scene cuts. Let's test it. I'll copy this result to the side and label it SVI Film. Now I'll generate another one using SVI Film Transition so you can see the difference. All right, here's the second result. 
I'll put them side by side and label this one transition. Both use the same SVI theme and settings. But the transition version gives you more dynamic camera cuts and angles, while the regular SVI film keeps the camera steadier, though still with some motion. Just by swapping the LoRa model, you get a completely different effect. This whole setup uses native nodes, essentially image to video, but we stitch the long video together using a loop, as I've explained in previous videos since WAN 2.1 VASE launched. Over the months, we've refined this loop system, and now it's super convenient. Just one sampler group handles everything. Finally, let's talk about SVI with Control Net Video to Video Generation. If you've followed my channel, you know we've used WAN 2.1 VASE with Control Net to create tons of animation combinations. In this updated workflow, based on my previous videos, I've swapped out the usual Fusion X LoRa, which includes Cost V for low step sampling because it causes color shifts over long durations. Instead, I'm using SVI Dance. It's designed to solve exactly that problem in video to video generation. Here we use Control Net Pose with WAN 2.1 Vase and a simple sampler to generate the video. The SVI Dance LoRa helps maintain consistency, not just in the character's outfit or hairstyle, but also in coloration, even when generating multiple five second batches for a long video. As I've shown before, my WAN 2.1 Vase video to video workflow uses a simple 1K sampler with DW Pose. According to the official GitHub, SVI Dance requires an image plus a skeleton, which means the DW Pose extracted pose data to guide the character's motion. I'm using an anime character as the style reference, with a TikTok dance video as the motion template, so the pose data drives the movement while the image provides the appearance. Without Fusion X or its diffusion model, there's less color shifting. But I still see a slight shift, especially from warm to cool tones, when I bypass the color match node. I did that on purpose to test if the SVI LoRa alone could maintain color consistency and motion quality. Motion degradation is less of an issue in ControlNet video to video because the pose guides the motion rather than letting the AI invent it, like in image to video or text to video. Still, the color tone drifts a bit, toward bluish hues in this case. That said, the character quality is solid. At 480p, the face isn't super sharp, but the clothing and outfit stay consistent. Honestly, even with plain WAN 2.1 vase, you can achieve that level of consistency, but I was hoping SVI Dance would further reduce color shifts in long generations. Maybe the implementation isn't perfect yet, or maybe the LoRa just can't fully solve it. But for now, we're using it correctly as a LoRa model. Anyway, there are lots of new fine-tuned models for long videos coming out. If this one doesn't fit your needs, try another. But if it works for you, happy experimenting. Alright, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. See ya!